Welcome back guys, this will be a tutorial on the mod Banner Kings uh, We're playing Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord using lots of mods uh, And one of them which I've been mentioning from time to time is uh, Banner Kings This episode will just focus on some of the base function there uh, we, we won't go into what we've been doing in this campaign uh, So this will be sort of a standalone CMA tutorial um, So we're starting here at the, the men's hierarchy screen And we just recently got our own uh, First own keep We're totally independent We haven't created a kingdom or anything yet But if you go here to Banner Kings and the Men's Hierarchy you will see this, this is the people we took it from you don't really need to care about this when you go to your settlement depending on which your settlement you're in you will get different tabs here because you can flick here, you get different ones uh, it's all different ones but we're gonna go back to this and uh, when you scroll like this you will see, eventually find your claim this is Hamburg so we will stake our claim here so this makes us the legal owner of it after a while uh, the time it takes depends a bit on your perks and stuff uh, in your character tree um, this isn't in vanilla at all but it adds another dimension once we finish this claim this will uh, change uh, color, I think it will say Ursurp, but you will be able to click it and once you Ursurp the county of Hamburg here, you will be able to claim these as well at least these two, because these are the villages tied to, uh, uh, to Hamburg What else can we look at here in Banner Kings? We do have the demands management, and this is a way to set your economy and so on. Uh, first, we have the overview here. This is the population in Hamburg. Uh, this is the different cultures trying to affect it. The dominant culture is uh, Imperium, that is Romans in this ca campaign. Um, here you can see stability, different uh, effects of it, and. Uh, yeah, then you can switch to economy and uh, since we're northerners we want to allow slaves to be exported Sorry. and there's lots of options here uh, so we just quickly go through this you can check this out yourself but this adds a completely another dimension to the game compared to vanilla uh, slave markets and stuff um, yeah, uh, we won't tax private slaves at the moment because we want a booming economy. This one, though, we will decrease our revenue. But since we just took this, we want to do every policy here, which just benefits the pop local population. And we will even exempt the tariffs. Tax policy very low. Criminal policy. Hmm. Yeah, you can see the different explanations there. This is if they share our culture, which they don't. Just uh, put enslavement for now. We won't click this. Of course, yeah, we want to spare some money. This is the actual legal owner. Uh, Yeah, this is interesting. Demands. This will pop up wherever you go. This is your demands limit, and this applies to you. With three out of five, you can see the different stats here. If we go over the demands limit, that is, if we own too many keeps ourselves, uh, we will get some uh, stability issues. So basically, you can't just hoard. Hoard and hoard and hoard and hoard 
uh, claims and uh, uh, settlements yourself, you need to spread them out either within your own clan. You can like give a claim to uh, one of your companions uh, if you have knighted them. We might go into that as well. Right now we're focusing on this step by step. But uh, or you can give uh, the rights to a, a settlement or a village to, for example, your wife or your sons. That will reduce your demands limit for yourself. So you want to try and keep this as low as possible. If you exceed this too much, you will have revolts and stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a vassal limit. Our wife doesn't count towards being a vassal, I think. Um, so yeah, workforce policy, we do want to construct stuff, uh, this is a bit about mining, even though you don't have a mine, we do have mining here, but even if you don't, there's some natural mining, even though you can't see it in settlements, uh, train rural area, let's double check the military, this is the current manpower, those are civilians still. Uh, total manpower, nobles and peasants, but those aren't recruited uh, yet. This is military mission, you can see there the explanation. explanation. You can read it for yourself, so you don't need to give me a read it. Uh, I just wanted to go quickly through, but there's lots of things to do here. We want to encourage militia because, yeah, they're all gone. We want to make them cheaper, but we don't want fold rationing. Um, Tiller policy, let's have them balanced. Uh, garrison policy, yeah, we do want to have more big garrison as well. Drafting policy, yeah, we want to increase the speed of drafting everything up. Religion. That will switch over time, I think. Can't really remember. It was a long time since I played this. But uh, we will have a look at all these things step by step on how I think I normally do things. Right now, we still haven't formed any kingdom. You can see this because it's grayed out. So right now, the only one people at war with us are people that hate us which are the rebels we took this town from. Yeah, we took this town from rebels, by the way. That's a good way to approach things. Not to be thrown into a war instantly. Uh, and th since we don't have a kingdom yet, we're less likely to get war declared upon us. We're not going to exploit that, though. Uh, this, you can transfer slaves. If you have prisoners in your party, you can just transfer them over here. and Will become uh, part of your slave pool instead of your normal prisoners pool. Don't think we. I think we sold most of our prisoners. Yeah, we only have uh, their rebel noble here. This is all vanilla. Uh, so yeah, uh, we did temporarily place this guy as governor. In Banner Kings, you have a lot more options. You can see here, this is new for me. Apparently we need some materials in order to build stuff more efficiently, I guess. So uh, you can see here, bring materials into the stash. That is, I think, the open stash. Or just the trader, I think. Uh, or let caravans bring them naturally. So this will eventually just fill up. And I think we're getting a boost from building projects. Uh, same thing basically applies on the stats you want to prioritize as in vanilla. You want high loyalty in order to have a high build speed and you also want uh, buffs to construction, like the workshops. Uh, then there's other options here, which also adds bonuses. Um, one other thing is daily defaults. This is sort of like vanilla, but you can see this one here. This is a very interesting option. Uh, we just summoned the next governor, so we're waiting for him. So right now there's a Roman governing this place, it's one of our companions. You can also select one of the locals, you can see the amount of companions we have, 
But these are the locals. You could select, if you're not running a companion heavy campaign and want to save your companions for something else, um, you could have one of the locals rule. But they won't get any uh, stat upgrades or anything like that in their uh, character sheets. So since we're running a mod which makes us have an unlimited amount of companions, we're using one of our own. But once our Sturgeon companion, our future governor gets here, we will replace him and then we start cultural assimilation. And that means you switch the culture to that of your factions. Um, Right now we don't even have a kingdom or faction, so to speak. We only have our little clan, so I don't think this will do much because it doesn't know which culture we're switching to. So right now we're just having it on uh, civil infrastructure to increase the uh, loyalty so it doesn't drop too far down. This is the same as uh, vanilla. You can see there's more workshops in Banner Kings than there is in vanilla because I think in vanilla they're capped to three or four. The standard in Banner Kings is five. Uh, and speaking of which, we're gonna be, we have actually bought previously workshops in Scandinavia. So we're gonna sell them from this tab in case they decide to declare war. We don't lose everything. Um, uh, no one's interested in buying that. So it adds some new functions, new types of workshops, more workshops, and yeah, sometimes you will get offers um, like this. Now, no one wanted it, no one wanted to buy it. So, I guess we keep that one for now. I have upgraded it once, so let's see. Just let that one be. Um, I can show you this while we're in the party screen just quickly. This is also a function of Banner Kings. If you cl click create party, only people who are noble within our clans or who we promoted to knights can be party members. So in this case, only our wife because our kids haven't come of age. You can talk to your companions and promote them, but we're not going to do that right now because you need, uh, I think, extra keeps in order to promote your companions to being knights and then they can lead their parties. Um, they won't lead your clan just because you give them a party or end up keep. But uh, yeah, that's how the titles, the demand circuit and titles are really important to manage in Banner Kings. That's a completely new flavor to the game. Uh, so another thing we're gonna head out now um so debuff now let's just wait a little bit we can go hunting for eight hours instead of just waiting because we want to remove we still have the debuff from sieging so might as well just wait here real quickly until the debuff is gone which should be about yeah now let's finish our hunting trip Let's see. We're gonna head out to these villages here until we see the pop up that our companion we summoned has joined our party. And the companion we're waiting for is the next governor. So, when we head into a village here, you have Banner King's options in the village as well. And if we start here, the mismanagement, same thing here but a bit different options. You can also see the stats here, uh, how everything is going with the, with the settlement. Uh, tax policy, we're gonna exempt them. We don't have a problem with money right now, so everything will be free for them. Um, yeah, we can't really do anything about this. You can also have minutia within your settlements. So we're gonna boost that, and we're gonna put them on Preferably, yeah, let's just have them balanced. I'm gonna conscript here as well. We don't want to raise militia because if we click this button now, we will take the militia they have and have them follow us. Uh, uh, that's how I think, if I remember correctly, this works. And we don't want that. We want them to remain in their village. Religion, we're gonna bother with that later. Or rather, 
Yeah, we want to save up a bit more influence first. Same thing here. You don't need to... Um, yeah, we're still waiting for this. In order to claim these, we don't need to go to this village. You can just do it from any settlement within this total area. Uh, so, for example, if we would travel up to Denmark right now, we would get another tab. This tab would show up. But you can actually flick tabs here and make your claims wherever you are. So you don't need to go to a specific settlement. I just noticed that now actually. Um, village projects, this is sort of like your building screen, similar to what you have in your towns. Uh, but there's different options here. Uh, yeah, this is a good option to increase the militia. So basically, this, you have to decide what you do. It's a fish farm here. So you see these different options here. And we do want to buff the strength of everything militia related. Uh, so we do want good fish as well. So we're going to prioritize that. We're going to have mines. We don't really need mines though. We're going to prioritize that. This reduces the raiding speed, giving the village palisades, which is nice. Since we're gonna be close to home, we're gonna have that. This increases militia production. This is manner gives you better quality of militia. So different options here. Also improving militia quality. Yeah, let's just put a bit of everything. Production, yeah, we do want good fish production here. Uh, this affects other stuff, but it's, since the base production is fish, we're not gonna boost anything but fish here. Uh, the fishing. And you can also see how long it takes before the fish farm is done. About two months. Um, estates. Don't really bother about this, I think. I haven't really gotten into exactly how this works. This dates cost a lot. I think it adds uh, a bit of stuff, but we're not gonna mess around with this at the moment, I think. I think we can just claim the states once with the rightful owner of everything. Uh, this is a vacant estate. Could take the vacant estate. Do cost half a million though, but I'm not sure about the does. But let's buy, open up this estate. It says we already own this, but I'm not sure about uh, exactly how estates work. But you can go hunt here. You can transfer slaves in here from your main town. We still already have some. If you go out here, you can see different nobles here. Uh, this is a landowner, landowner. This is a preacher. They, they don't like us very much. But what you want to do here, in terms of cultural assimilation, is to tell them Let me introduce myself. to convert to my culture. I think they will convert to our main character's culture. Yeah. It will cost us a bit of influence, as you saw. But you want to do this no, because this will make the troops you're able to recruit of your own culture instead of the native one. I don't really know about conversion of faith to bonus. We will wait for that. We will prioritize. It's an honor to meet you. Sorry. <coughs> That's a big sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. 
I was thinking about this preacher here and that started making me sneeze. I think these preachers move around. So there's like... Let me introduce myself. Uh, we can tell them to switch to our culture as well, but we're not gonna bother. I think they move around. <coughs> so, uh, we're not gonna bother converting him at the moment. But as you can see now, there's Romans here now. Uh, we did convert culture. He's just gonna leave these as they are and come back here and show you later how it looks. Um, if you look here, they do have fine fish here, which is nice. Stock up on some food. Oh, yeah. Everything you buy uh, will actually increase the village. Uh, coin prosperity. This won't reset or something. It will just grow and grow and grow. And that adds the prosperity and the amount you can tax and stuff like that. So that's also different from vanilla. Well, let's head over to the other settlement while we wait for our governor to join us. We only need governor for, for this place. These guys will manage themselves. Get over here. Yeah. We can. I don't think we can catch him. He's way fast. No, we're basically the same speed. We can catch him. Let's catch this guy. Yeah, that one is chasing our caravan. That's close enough. Who are you? This is one of the rebels. Just gonna out to solve this. Because this fighting isn't our focus. Capture him. Uh, for this episode, fighting isn't our focus. Uh, let's head up to the other village connected to Hamburg. You do wanna sort these things out, and we're gonna an actually to send one of our many companions on this quest. Uh, nine days. Now let's look for someone. Which, someone, a companion which isn't. Uh, do again. Yeah, let's just pick her. 13 days, 2 weeks. Let's see if we can get that down. Here, this one, 9 days. Looks better. And us send a couple of random companions with them. I like uh, these. So we don't need to bother with that ourselves. And again, since we're at this tab, we want to talk to him to convert to our culture. We do have the influence for it, I think. Yeah. This landowner as well. Landowner. Let me introduce myself. Let's leave this preacher alone. I don't. Yeah, he's got a tab as well. Let's actually convert the preacher. We do have influence for it. We're getting a lot of influence gain. Let me introduce myself. Basically now they have all Romans here, but once they start producing new troops, they should be Sturgeon troops instead. Uh, let's have a double look here, under the demands management, same thing here, 
we want to accept them at the moment. Encourage Melissa, subsidize it, so balanced, and conscript. And then let's go, yeah, not there. The village projects, the building screen again. The same thing here. We do have a silver mine here. So, I think it was a silver mine, right? Yeah, silver ore. So we can have this, that's that first. All the saints are nice. That will take a long time. Wow, maybe it will go down. You can boost uh, everything with slaves because of who look here. here. Well, they do have a lot of slaves. Weird. I don't know why it takes such a long time to upgrade it. So that's what you can do here. Let's stock on some food. We can leave while well, we can bring this to town just to help them out. So that's how it looks very different compared to vanilla in villages, especially, but also a bit in towns. We're gonna take the time as well to form a kingdom, so you have to bear with me while we wait for a summoned companion to reach us. Not him though. What's this? Well, we don't care about him. He's just visiting, but we don't really want to talk to him. You don't want to get criminal rating in your own territories. That will just ditch your influence, uh, which isn't what we want. Uh, another thing we could do here is ask these people as well to convert to our culture. This will speed up the conversion rate later on. I'm yours. As long as you have the influence for it. Which we do at the moment. We don't care about faith right now. Let them keep their faith. I don't know why it gives us a tab and option to give them slaves. Was this the guy we talked to just now? No. Then the criminal gangs. And that's a preacher actually. Well, we couldn't convert into our faith. This gang gang guy though, let's convert them to our culture. This is mainly for the recruitment options. Oh, I misclicked. Almost picked up a quest there. So, it's we're waiting for one of our companions. Um, and he should be en route. Which one is it? This one. Does it say? No, not really. They're moving to us. Since no one is attacking anything or some such, let's just uh, take the moment here and go hunt. Yeah, some robbers are attacking our caravans. Part of life, I guess. As you can see now, when we click recruit, there's some Sturgeon troops here already. Uh, so basically you want to clear out all the troops because otherwise these Romans will stay here uh, So we will recruit all of them These aren't unlocked yet because of our relation is not high enough But you have to recruit the older ones in order for Sturgeons to move in as recruitable options So let's just put the Romans as part of the garrison Rest. 
see the status here is already switched. We do drop a bit in security and loyalty, but we're on a positive note in loyalty now because we still have a Roman governor. So let's set up for a time by going to visit the villages and recruit up all the. Well, the rebel clan got destroyed. That's nice. They abandoned their cause. See, Rome. We need to remove these Romans, otherwise these Durgans won't pop up. So let's recruit everyone. Having short save interval, because sometimes when you run a lot of mobs, you tend to crash. But we so far been okay. Yeah, now our governor has arrived, so we will manage town, switch up the governor here. Where is that guy? Is he the last one going in? What was his name? Sorry, I need to double check. Vladim Frostbeer. We do have government governor's perks and stuff on him, that's why we want him. And his Sturgeon clock culture. Let's see, Vladim Frostbeer, this will take a minute. There he is. And now we will switch to cultural assimilation for him to speed up the process. I'd rather have that from experience than this. Once uh, everything is culturally assimilated, uh, we can focus more on loyalty again. I think that's the way to go. You might want to go this route, but we're going to go this route. From experience, that's faster. Uh, and we can donate a bit more money here again. Boost the projects. Let's see here. We still need materials. Did you finish the marketplace already? No. We just didn't click that. So that's basically it on how you set up your stuff. Now we will add. I think we might as well do that now, not to exploit. Normally, if you want to have peace and not be bothered for a while, uh, you don't want to create your kingdom straight away. But we're feeling a bit risky. We do want the conflict for the progression of this campaign. So we, in this video, we will start up our kingdom. And I think you approach it the same way as you do in vanilla, but there's a couple of tweaks. Uh, as well, if you click your character sheet, this is part of Banner Kings as well. Uh, our faith is Paker Wing, this is like heathenism. Um, first, you have decisions here, and you can switch culture here if you want, if you don't want to be Sturgeon anymore. Uh, this we're gonna try and unlock somehow. I think we need to. Uh, I think we need to um, talk to a governor just like in Vanilla first. So let's go and have a chat. Well, you can return to the party with this guy. Let's visit our hall here. I'm yours to command. See if this is an option or not. This is vanilla all the way. Yeah, same thing as vanilla. And we are going to name it North. No. 
Yeah, this is all vanilla. And we do have some naked companions. Interesting. I thought we equipped... Huh. Well, ah, these are our prostitutes. Our whores. Sorry, I forgot about them. Whoever... Of course you should bring your prostitutes to your campaign table, right? I think we... To be honest, I don't think we equipped all our companions with Zulian gear. They just picked a couple of random companions to stand with us here now, because we have so many. Yeah, the North Mint. And this is a new pop-up though, this is Banner Kings. We have full page. this is sort of our rank. Yeah, since we're the founder we obviously have full page. So basically, this is our kingdom throne. Uh, I think uh, we're gonna head out real quick and check if any options showed up in terms of the tutorial. Uh, let's go to our character sheet once again to see if there's more decisions available. And now, we have kingdom options here, we're gonna double check here. Yeah, we can switch our court. Now it's default in Hamburg because it's thrown on keep. If we had four, uh, more places, we could switch our court to another city. Uh, what's this? I think I found kingdom. Gonna double check what happens if we click Found Kingdom here. It takes a lot of influence and a lot of money to find our found our own titles. Instead of being under the Kingdom of the Romans in Germania, uh, we can create this. But we need more influence, and we're a bit short on that now. So you can see here. So this will change how the demands the hierarchy looks. So we can't form it right now, we need to stack up more kingdom uh, influence. A good tip to have before you uh, even think about creating your kingdom or even joining one for that matter is to have high charm. Uh, we have a mod called XP Tweaks which removes the hard cap, but basically you want to re at least reach 275. I think you will need more social points, like five here is social, uh, and uh, like full focus points to reach 275 uh, in vanilla. Uh, but you want to get that up to this so you automatically generate influence every day. You can see here uh, we do get immortal charm, the top one there of the information screen. That's 30 influence every day. It's really recommended because that makes you more of a powerhouse in the kingdom. How to gain in charm is just like in in, uh, in vanilla. You donate troops, you do quests for nobles, and so on and so on. So yeah, I think this is it for this tutorial of Banner Kings. Uh, there's so many things in the Banner Kings add-on. These things are Banner Kings add-on stuff. So, you can learn languages, which makes you get instant relation gains with other culture members if you speak their language, like with the, with the Romans here now. Uh, haven't gotten really into the fate stuff. Uh, lordship is important uh, because you can, this final perk here makes you build claims faster. That thing in the men's limit. Uh, so, yeah, there's lots of things, Banner Kings. Um, as well, a nice thing even before you uh, create your kingdom is, like I said, the languages and the lifestyle choice. Pick one, uh, 
different cultures have different lifestyle choices. Uh, I prefer the Sturgeon Vajaragar, which gives great buffs uh, for fighting on foot, especially. Uh, some the buff, mostly buffs. Uh, each culture have their own. I'm not gonna go into details. Uh, you can also assign your companions. Uh, these different ones isn't really necessary to do, but uh, yeah, you can. I normally just pick the base one for my companions, uh, and then don't level them up until like I have way too many focus points left. Uh, so that's basically it. I'm not gonna go into faith because I haven't read up about it that much um, So that's what you need to think about uh, When you get your first towns uh, Regardless if it's your own or if it's uh, you get rewarded it, it through a vote in your kingdom If you joined another king's kingdom um, You need to go double check every stat and thing the settlements um, it affects a lot both the quality of food and production but also the amount of troops uh, in the villages and in the town um, good to have other incomes than just your towns in case you need to like now when we just took it uh, need to buff the town's eternal economy so yeah this was a, a short tutorial that I recorded so sorry that I'm not like drawing stuff and things like that i'm doing this mostly for fun um, but i thought that this was worth talking about while i was going through the first steps anyway so thank you for watching i hope this somewhat helped uh, next video we will continue our campaign series uh, and uh, yeah you will get more action in those videos uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. It helps a lot. If we can push this to a thousand uh, subscribers, it would be awesome. Um, but uh, any comment, like, uh, any input at all, both in these type of tutorials and the more uh, campaign driven uh, videos, anything helps. Just have a look at the channel. Uh, I can warn you though, the first videos I just completely just live recorded uh, and then i realized wait these are turning into three hour long videos and no one's gonna really watch that so i started to chop them down into smaller videos uh, everything between 15 minutes to an hour depending on what's happening in the campaign and like now i felt like doing a tutorial about banner king spot uh, and how you manage your villages and stuff so i decided to do that instead as a side thing uh, let me know if you want more tutorial videos. I don't mind doing them, but I, it, it will be in a live format and edited um, So you just have to bear with me with that, but uh, just ask me about anything I can push out a small tutorial about, tutorial about it as I uh, play the game anyway um, But thanks for watching any input would be great uh, You all have a really good time now guys. Thanks for watching